the midst of the worst crisis in Penn State's 156 year history, came the end of an era. November 9th, violence erupted on campus. Shortly after this announcement by University Board of Trustees Vice Chairman John Surma. Joe Paterno is no longer the head football coach, effective immediately. After 61 years coaching at Penn State, Joe Paterno's tenure was over. Joe Pot notified who he needed to notify, and he got randomly fired over the phone after all he's done for this campus. Decision tonight, honestly, I think it was the right one. Joe Pot could have done more. Earlier that evening, Paterno was at his home near campus when a Penn State football official delivered this handwritten note. Scribbled on a page from a Penn State football notepad was the name John Surma and his cell phone number. Paterno made the call. Surma informed Paterno he was dismissed as Penn State's head coach. Upon hearing that, Paterno quickly hung up. Later, with students and media gathered outside his home, Paterno and his wife, Sue, emerged. All right, I'm out of it maybe now. My phone call put me out of it, but we'll go from here, okay? The Board of Trustees now says, had Paterno not hung up the phone that night, they would have informed him he was to be named Coach Emeritus, an honor bestowed upon Jerry Sandusky when he retired in 1999. The honor gave the accused coach free reign over the Penn State football facilities, a privilege Joe Paterno was denied. Outside the lines obtained a termination letter Paterno received one week later from University General Counsel Cynthia Baldwin. The title Coach Emeritus was not mentioned. In the letter, seen here for the first time, Paterno was instructed to return his office keys, his university ID card, and his parking permit, all within a week. Two months after receiving that termination letter, Joe Paterno died of lung cancer, with his legacy, to some, still an open question. Joseph Vincent Paterno, known simply as Joe or Joe Pa, was born on December 21st, 1926 in Brooklyn, New York. After serving in the United States Army during World War II, Paterno attended Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, where at the age of 20, he played quarterback and cornerback for the school's football program under the leadership of Coach Rip Engel. Engel accepted the title of head football coach at Pennsylvania State University in 1950. That same year, after graduating from Brown with an English major, Paterno followed Engel to become one of his assistants. Sixteen years later, in 1966, Engel retired from coaching college football, and Paterno took his place as head coach. It was a position in which he held until his termination on November 9, 2011. Before the scandal that led to his termination, Paterno had a total of 409 victories. It was the most by any head football coach in the first division of the National College Athletics Association. Since Paterno's termination from PSU, his all-time coaching record consists of 298 victories, 136 defeats, and three ties. The first theory that our group chose to relate to Joe Paterno was the Bentham Theory. Also known as the end base theory, the Bentham theory is based on the consequences of the action that a person would make. Under Bentham's theory, it states that if you are doing something right, it is for the greater good of the people. If something wrong were to happen, then it would make you wrong for what you have done. Joe Paterno did something that he believed was right for the greater good of Pennsylvania State University and their football program. Here's what happened. As early as 1998, PSU assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky went under investigation by PSU police. Three years later, then-PSU assistant football coach Mike McQuery reportedly witnessed Sandusky performing sexual acts on a 10-year-old boy in the shower facilities of the PSU campus locker room. McQuery then notified Paterno the next day. According to reports, Paterno then notified PSU athletic director Tim Curley about the alleged incident, and the report was then passed to Vice President of Finance and Business Gary Schultz, who was also the head of university police. Pennsylvania Attorney General Linda Kelly said that Paterno was cooperative with the prosecutors and that he met his statutory responsibility to report the 2001 incident to school administrators. Pennsylvania State Police Commissioner Frank Noonan opinioned that while Paterno did not violate any laws, 
anyone with knowledge and possible sexual abuse against minors had a moral responsibility to, mo to notify police. Despite the nature of the 2001 incident that McQuarrie told Paterno he witnessed in the showers, Paterno did not notify state police. Under his reasoning, Paterno believed that it was right to pass this issue along to someone else instead of confronting it. Our thinking behind all this is that Paterno probably felt that if he opened an investigation, it would have brought down not only the football program, but the entire school as well. In the end, Paterno was doing what he thought was for the greater good of the program and the school. We felt that Joe used hedonic calculus to weigh out the pros and cons of the consequences of opening an investigation. The pro, in Paterno's eyes, would have been the fact that the name and the image of the school would not be tainted by these allegations. The cons, in Paterno's eyes, would have been that if an investigation were to be opened up, then both the school and its football program would suffer financially and the PSU image would be affected dramatically by bringing the eyes of one wanted attention to PSU. Under this thinking, Paterno is doing what is best for the greater good of the Penn State community. By not confronting the allegations, he was doing something morally wrong. The second theory that we chose to relate to Joe Paterno is Kohlberg's Ethnic of Justice. In Kohlberg's Ethnics of Justice, there are three stages and six steps that relate to a person's development. Those stages being pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. The particular stage and step that Paterno falls into is stage 2.4, conventional and authority and social order maintaining orientation. In this stage and step, right and wrong are determined by what the final outcome of the action will be. This relates to Paterno because his actions were determined as morally wrong when he chose not to go to police. The main reason we chose this theory is because Paterno was choosing to do what he believed to be maintaining the social order and not giving PSU a bad name. He was afraid that it would cause a state of frenzy that would take maybe years of recovery. Joe Paterno was an extremely loyal person. However, it was the wrong form of loyalty that eventually got him under a lot of scrutiny. He held a high value on his relationships and all of his acquaintances. DISC is a profile of four meanings, dominance, influence, steadiness, and conscientiousness. Because of these qualities, we have decided that Joe Paterno's primary behavioral style would be that of an S. The S is an extremely loyal person and patient individual who values relationships over anything else. An example of this is how Paterno handled the accusations against Sandusky. Instead of being prompt and investigating the allegations, Paterno took too long of a time to react and only pass the information along to his superiors. For Paterno's secondary style, we identified him as an I. One of Paterno's main qualities was his personality. Although he was stern with his coaching style, his players always followed his lead. It was his leadership that earned him the support of the entire Penn State community. Joe Paterno and Tim Curley had an interesting relationship. Curley was the athletic director of PSU, which made him Paterno's boss. Because Paterno was an S, he valued this relationship with his employer. Paterno always kept an open stream of communication with Curley and wanted to do right by him. When Paterno received the allegations, he did what he believed was correct and passed it along to Curley. Because Paterno was an S, he wanted to do what was right by law and pass the information along to his superior. Paterno, would, Paterno valued this relationship and wanted to please Curley, which was something an S tries to do. Jerry Sandusky was Joe Paterno's defensive coordinator and overall reason for the conspiracy which led to his termination. The allegations against Sandusky were brought up to Paterno, and he dealt with them accordingly. Since we believed that Paterno was an S, he did not want to cast a dark shadow on the campus. He did not investigate the allegations because he thought that the correct move was to report what he had heard to someone above him instead of investigating it himself. It was because of the S-style per personality that Paterno did not take immediate action. It was due to this conspiracy that got him terminated from the university. Joe Paterno's existential crisis was a big factor in his demise. He was given allegations that his assistant coach, Jerry Sandusky, was sexually abusing children at PSU. When Paterno was given these allegations, he chose just to pass them along to his superiors instead of investigating them himself. This turned out to be a critical mistake for Paterno as he took the allegations to his superiors, 
they swept it under the rug and did not do further investigations. Once the public found out about what was going on, Paterno was heavily criticized for how he handled the situation, and ultimately, it led to his firing. We chose to use the ABC paradigm to relate to Joe Paterno. By doing this, we had to describe the event. When Joe Paterno was dismissed from PSU, he was dismissed because he did not act on the allegation. The main self-task statement was when Paterno said, I should have done more. Paterno was extremely concerned that he had let the school, his family, and himself down. Because of this, he had to think that he should have done more when the allegations were brought up to him. The first emotion that we believe he went through was disappointment. He let his family, the school, and himself down by covering up the conspiracy. The second emotion that we felt Paterno felt was anger. He was angry in the way the school shandled the situation when he passed it along to him. He was also angry with himself for not acting further upon the allegations. Paterno also felt anger for the fact that he was forced out of PSU instead of leaving on his own terms. He always said that he would leave, that he would leave the school once he was ready to leave, but the decisions that he made ultimately led to the dark shadow that tarnished his career forever.